Naomi, hello, hello.、Uh, tonight we are going to be talking about Interstellar. You've seen it recently. I've seen it recently. I have, and I think I think I think it is an homage to your natural origin. We should drop the R entirely. Interstellar. I think that's、so、a great if... idea. Interstellar. <laughs> interstellar. So, what did you think of Interstellar? Well, I'm of course a big Nolan fan, right? Not so the Batman's films one and two were better than three.、Uh, my favorite. Well, then of course we have Inception, right? Mm-hmm. Inceptions is like impossible to resist, and then my favorite of all of his, his movies is Memento. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh yeah, it? yeah, that's that's something. So is it just me, or is his films getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Right, larger and larger themes. Now we're dealing with you know with、uh, intergalactic、so. stuff, reinventing and, quantum physics and the like. Right, right. So、yeah. I I wondered. I tell you, Naomi, at at the very outset of the film, it was pretty. I was not too far into it, and I wondered if. Uh, with this film, Nolan was jumping the shark. I don't know if you know that phrase, but it means just no, sort of, sort of, sort of, no. well, it means like going going too far. Like you had a good thing going, but you've really gone too far, and now you've kind of revealed the inherent absurdity of your whole plan. And and it concerned me because the, the film was so big and so so gigantic, and I wondered whether it would it would hold together in the end. My own feeling was、um, maybe because it's you know this kind of subject is not exactly like at the core of. Of who I am and what I think,、um, that I I wasn't as find I didn't find it nearly as compelling as as his his as his, for example Inception or something like that.、Right. Nonetheless, well, I mean, there are some great moments. Yeah, no, I, I've had that complaint from a lot of people、uh, who hold、uh, Inception up here and who went to see it thinking this is going to be the best film of all time, and it fell short. I actually loved Interstellar. It was no Inception. Uh, I didn't like it as much as Inception, but I had a really great time for a whole lot of reasons. Well, I just wasn't sure that it held together as as、yeah. as well as it should. It seemed to be broken up into pieces, and there were moments of、uh, that I just I I felt like.、Um, Like things were getting a little ridiculous, like、right. in the end when he's he's hanging around in the in the fifth dimension or whatever, trying to push the books off the shelf, and and、uh, you know that all just came to,、uh, just a little too clever by half, you know, in some ways. Yeah. And, and so there yeah, was. Yeah, no, that. that that bit I sort of.、Um... Yeah, that sort of I, I lost my suspension of disbelief during that. Actually, you know what? I, that that is a lie. I keep my suspension of disbelief through almost every film. I will watch it and be like. If this is what the director wants me to think, all right, cool. I'm just going to go along with it. But I definitely saw that it、um, added some weakness to the story. But there were some great things that I loved about it. I thought it was such a beautiful film. There were two things that really stood out to me. One was I love the portrayal of 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 worsening poverty in the in the outset. So here you, it starts in some what uncertain time in the future, but、yeah. the the country is getting、uh, like ever more poor, and people are adapting to it like ever more, right? So our diets are getting worse all the time.、Uh, the incomes going down. There are fewer and fewer opportunities. People have to diminish their expectations of what jobs they're going to take. You know, everybody's sort of down in the dumps, and and people are adapting to it.、And、so that was, I don't remember another film that sort of portrayed that as as well. And of course, inevitably, they're all eating corn.、Right? Right. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> so that、yeah. was a, that was a beautiful presentation and a reminder, I think, to all of us that we can get poor. You know,、uh, rich is the exception in the history of the world. Poverty is the norm, and we can revert、mm-hmm. if we t- if we ha- have the wrong kinds of economic policies、uh, or we take the wrong、yeah. steps as as a society and a political order.、Um, we will see that that poverty arrive. So I thought that was a, a great presentation. And I thought that that was、um, that sort of went hand in hand with a couple of things I found very interesting. First of all, you have a government that is rewriting textbooks. There's this sort of wonderful scene where、um, you know the dad goes in to talk to his daughter's teachers. He ends up just getting so angry at the teachers because he just disagrees so much with this government control of what the curriculum is and what his daughter is learning at school. I, I just really loved that. That was beautiful,、scene. and and also the anti-science, you know. Was was、yeah. just part of it, right? So the very anti-science, anti-science, and everybody's adapting themselves to poverty and re- reduced expectations、yeah. for the future. We can't really do those things. Really, the moonshot was a fake. 
you know, uh, there, there can't really be any progress. Let's just kind of scramble yeah. by and, and survive. And so it was so a, yeah, a beautiful picture of what happens, uh, really. Yeah, in, no, in I love <laughs> that. And I love the fact that we have this society where um, they had to, you know, make the people feel better because the people didn't see science as being a worthwhile expenditure. Uh, whether it was personal or government, it's irrelevant to me. They didn't see it as something worthwhile pursuing and then at least to poverty. So I thought that was a great message of the film. And and I love the fact that society, it looks like it's going down, looks like it's going down. And you know what? Technology saves the day. That, that's an interesting point. I hadn't entirely thought that through. But of course, you're exactly right. Technology was the thing that, that saves the day, and as just, just as it's saving us uh, now. I see a lot of parallels with society today because we have this movement where people want to regress back. They um, I think of the past with this form of nostalgia. They idealize it. Um, honestly, like if we actually look at the life expectancy of people, the conditions people were living in, uh, in a time where we didn't have any of this technological advancement, it, I mean, we, we, all, we all die at the age of 20. We will all die of, of any kind of disease and, and lung infection and, and all of these things. And yet we idealize it as if nature is this state we want to go back to. You know what? Going backwards is not the answer. And I think this film is a great reflection of that. Mm. It is technology that is inevitably going to save us. When society comes across a natural resource and it, we start to get a shortage, suddenly we invent new technologies that don't need that natural resource. We evolve and society improves because of it. So I think that the answer is technology. And I think the film really, really showed this. That's an excellent point. You know, there's, a, there's another theme that emerges, and it's a little bit of a surprise. Uh, when they're trying to decide about which astronaut to, to, uh, to, to save, okay. right? She, she gives this tribute to, to love, because she admits that she wants, she wants to divert the resources to going after the man she loves. And she says, look, I, did, I don't think this is a bias. I think this is real. There's something important and authentic and true about love. Because why, why do we love people who are dead, for example? Uh, that was the, interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. And so she, th she thinks that maybe love taps into a dimension that's beyond our comprehension or our cognition, that's, that's sort of beyond science or scientific understanding. And of course, that appeals to me very much. And, yeah. I, and I, wanted to, I wanted to like take notes during that speech. I thought it was really beautiful. And the, to me, there's an element of technology that is about love, and there's an element of freedom that's about love, and an element of a capitalism that's about love. Yeah. We, we, there's something about love that, that creates a vision in our minds of things that we can't otherwise explain or understand yeah. or otherwise see unless we see it with the eyes of love. But, but it's just as real. And it's probably yeah. a good guide. I mean, love is the guide of, of, of great entrepreneurs, you know, great creators, uh, great innovators. Uh, it's love that, that, that breaks us out of the existing patterns and drives us towards finding and discovering new things and, and presenting them to the world. It's, love is the force that's constantly renewing, you know, the face of the earth. So I was, I was very grateful for in the middle of all this sort of hyper science stuff. Uh, to, yeah, to, to, to I, um, deal with this mystical topic, really. Love, it, it's um, a form of, of creation. You know, it allows you to visualize things that aren't yet in existence. And it's that creative energy, that um, love energy that drives us towards these things. I think it's a really um, poignant uh, moment. But I also think yeah. that is one of the most... Um, uh, polarizing aspects of the film because you have a whole lot of uh, like a lot of my friends are uh, sort of math physics people so I had a lot of friends who um, who didn't like that sort of aspect of the film but who otherwise enjoyed the idea of your know, technology and uh, space exploration and all oh, of but, that. But, but Naomi there's a, a funny thing happened after I saw the film I wonder if you saw the story there's a, a brilliant story on Wired magazine that talked about time travel. When we're talking about the theory of relativity when we're talking about uh, different planets and how time operates differently depending on how fast the uh, planet's moving etc um, when they go onto that wave planet and every you know hour is like seven years or something yeah. and they realize that if they stumble you know they they're losing so much time it just puts a completely different perspective on time and how we use it and i i always find that really fascinating well and apparently not entirely unrealistic at least no, you know, at so this is this is this is an actual application of 
a far-flung you know, sort of theory that we have not yet to see in reality. But, you know, um, that's the whole point of, of having free markets and, and, a, and a progressing society is that we discover new things. So g- good for Christopher Nolan for exploring this. I thought it maybe, maybe even for him it was a little bit of an overreach. But I'm, I'm glad he made it and, and I enjoyed it very much. What did you think about the, um, the theme in the movie of doing things for yourself? and doing things for the sake of others. Now, that was an interesting theme that was explored. Uh, when you arrive on one of these planets and this astronaut's been there for all of this time, out of self-preservation, he lies about data um, in order to get himself saved, as opposed to giving people realistic data in which he knew that no one was going to come save him. That did, it did seem like a, a kind of a problem for, a, for an ethics textbook in, in college, didn't it? You know, should, yeah. should you do this? And we're sympathetic with him, I suppose, you know, up to a certain point. And we don't know exactly what we would do under those same, same conditions. But it did seem a little bit, little bit rotten. And, and p- people did respond to it, you know, as if it was just outright immoral. You, you really do need p- peace and prosperity in plenty in order to be faced with a kind of a range of moral options that are consistent with our moral intuitions, you know? And so so the more constrained the world is, the more scarcified things are, the less we we have the opportunity to choose what's right in in a viable way. There's a reason why these little ethical dilemmas are always appearing in in cases of extreme scarcity, you know? There's three men in life vote and only enough food for two, you know? And so what are you going to do? So all these uh, kind of artificial situations all involve you know, extreme limitations on, 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 mat- on material provision. And, exactly. And, yeah, and th- in this case, it was just, uh, you know, he, he had no other opportunity, so he does bad things. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is so, again, a case for, for, for prosperity, basically, and, and for freedom. Exactly. Am I right that basically at the, the, in the end that so-called Plan B was, was, uh, was pursued and, and uh, everybody was wiped out with the exception of those handful of people that were saved? Am I, am I wrong, right or wrong about that? What it seemed to me is that the world completely evolved. It was no longer this um, three-dimensional space uh, where time and, and space operates in the, in the conventional way that we understand it. They completely transcended that. Gravity works differently and time works differently. And it just seemed like uh, suddenly they gained this insight that enabled them to do things that, um, that they didn't understand before. And I think that's a really important message about okay. technology, that we have very a very limited ability to be able to see solutions for problems uh, that haven't already been invented. Isn't once they've that been invented, so yeah, once they've been invented, uh, then, we then can, they're obvious. Then they're obvious. In, in, in retrospect, say, well, of course, you know, join the dots. But right. you think a hundred years ago, thinking of the internet, no one ever foresaw that as a solution for so many of the problems uh, that we we have solved no, via I, I, uh, I was, technology. I was spend, spend, spending the day using my GPS navigating around Portland. I'm able you know, a sound town about which I know nothing, and I've been able to go here, 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 there without any problem. Just turn, 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 turn. How much time have I saved to this? And and yet, yeah, you're exactly right. If 20 years ago somebody said, well, you know, someday there'll be a little device in your pocket that will tell you which way to turn and which way to go, even in a city you know yeah. nothing about, I wouldn't have believed it for a second. And you know, uh, Naomi, I am at seminars all the time when people ask me questions like, oh, well, how in a stateless world are we going to deal with the problems of crime? Um, you know, how can we possibly uh, uh, find a replacement for, for, for jail? What, what is the solution to, to uh, the, the problem of, of, of retirement? You know, and I hear these questions and I'm thinking, Wow, you know, I don't know really, and that's the point of freedom, is to give yeah. us to give us solutions to things that we otherwise wouldn't know anything about. Yeah, um, the future yeah. is uh, so different to what we can possibly imagine because we just mm-hmm. don't have the tools to be able to um, foresee what's out there. If we could foresee what's out there, we'd have it already. No, that's right. Um, and we don't. So it has le- yet to be envisioned, and but, it's probably going to look completely different, uh, differently to, to however we, we um, predict. Hayek said this amazing thing that I just always reflect on. He says, um, if we knew always the, what the results uh, of freedom would be, the case for it would largely disappear. Yeah. And, you know, this kind of like, yes, it's a mind-blowing statement in some way, you know, worthy of inclusion in, in Christopher Nolan's next film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Christopher Nolan has created this world that is unlike anything we could fathom. It seems very far-fetched. It seems completely unrealistic. But honestly, maybe he is the closest person. Uh, he's gotten the closest to predicting what it's actually like because we mm. really don't know. 
Well, you know what? It makes me want to go see uh, Interstellar again. Interstellar. You know, Interstellar again. I, I, I had my doubts about it coming out of it, uh, although I found some redeeming features, but uh, I think you've, you've inspired me to, to, to look more deeply. All the best to you, Naomi. Wonderful Thanks. to visit. Bye-bye. See ya.